everyone, welcome back. Uh, my name is Elisa. We're going through the human reproductive system. We are looking at the female aspect. We're going to go through part 15, the ovarian cycle. The ovarian cycle is three kind of parts. One is the follicular phase, two is ovulation, and three is the luteal phase. Um, and so what happens is it's going to really to be talking about what's happening in the ovaries. That's why it's the ovarian cycle. Follicular phase extends from the beginning of menstruation until uh, days 1 to 14. It includes what we call the pre-ovulatory phase. So that's the end of menstruation until ovulation proper or the bursting forth of an egg cell out of the follicle. It has the most variation in any part of the cycle. So sometimes it's right away and sometimes it's a little further back during uh, this, like during these days. So it's... um not always a you're not always able to predict the exact date of ovulation not always follicle stimulating hormone is going to stimulate as you would imagine some follicles to grow secrete and then mature on to become the new ooze eggs um the dominant follicle will become increasingly sensitive to follicle stimulating hormone luteinizing hormone as well as estradiol the main follicle that is in charge is going to be uh, have a rich blood supply and a large number of follicle stimulating hormone receptors, so it becomes very highly stimulated, and uh, it would be able to develop onto what we refer to as a pre-ovulatory follicle, like this is going to be the one that's released. Other ones uh, during the process are going to be what we call antral follicles, and so they're going to degenerate. Uh, they're going to atrophy during atresia. That's the process that is known as. The ovary also contains follicles at even earlier stages of maturation for future cycles, just in case. Ovulation is the rupture of the mature follicle and the release of the egg, typically around day 14, sometimes accompanied with some pain and light spotting, sometimes nothing at all. Estradiol is going to stimulate a surge of luteinizing hormone and a lesser spike of follicle stimulating hormone. Luteinizing hormone is going to make a couple things happen. One, the primary oocyte is going to finish up round one of meiosis and it's going to eventually produce a secondary oocyte, uh, which will go on to become like an egg proper, and then the first polar body is discarded. Fluid, follicular fluid, is going to build rapidly as the follicle is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it can look it, like on the surface of the ovary, like the ovary has like a blister there. Macrophages, leukocytes, are going to start secreting enzymes that are actually going to uh, chew up the follicle wall. Getting it ready for release. Um, and it's going to look a little bit like nipples on top of the surface. Oops, there it goes. So here's that feedback loop a little bit. So up here we've got a hypothalamus and that is regulating both the anterior and the posterior pituitary. In this point, in this uh, part, we are going to be looking at how estradiol is going to stimulate um, hypothalamus and then go on to stimulate the production and uh, release of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary. That's going to travel through the bloodstream all the way down to the ovary proper, and it's going to stimulate, as you would imagine, um, the development and maturation release of uh, the follicle. So a ovulation can occur and an oocyte can be released. Um, the maturing follicle is going to secrete estradiol. So it gives a feedback saying like, hey, slow down, we have enough. Hey, we need a little bit more. So that's kind of how that feedback loop is going to go. All right. Um, my... There it is. Ovulation is quick. It only takes a few minutes. Um, the stigma seeps follicular fluid for about one to two minutes, however. The follicle is going to be bursting. Remaining fluid is going to ooze out, carrying little uh, secondary oocytes and cumulus orifice on out. It's normally swept up by the ciliary current and taking it into the uterine tube right there through the fembrae. And then here's kind of what it looks like. Here's like an, like this is like, it's kind of interesting because this is like the ovary and here's that like follicle, right? So you can imagine when that blur bursts, there would be a little bit of spotting and a little bit of pain. All right, next is the ovarian cycle continued. I uh, just wanted to kind of not not be too long with my videos. Uh, but I hope that was helpful. I uh, hope you're out there somewhere having a good day. Bye-bye.